WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everyone. An early morning shooting at Winona leaves two people dead and another in a Jackson hospital. Our Riley Livingston has been following this story all day. She joins us now live in the studio with more. Riley. Joey, it all started with a domestic dispute that quickly spiraled out of control. Just before 2 o'clock Friday morning, shots rang out in front of this house on Montgomery Street in Winona. Chief Investigator Dan Harrod tells us what began as a domestic dispute escalated to a murder-suicide, leaving two people dead and another seriously injured. The original call came out as a domestic dispute, and uh, just before officers arrived on scene, they received a second call from dispatch stating that uh, somebody may be threatening someone with a firearm. And the officers were just down the road from the scene and actually heard gunshots. When officers arrived on scene, they found a female victim lying in the front yard, suffering from two gunshot wounds. She was still conscious and was flown to University of Mississippi Medical Center in Jackson for treatment. She was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, I think. And, uh, you know, it's, if she had been inside of the residence or anything like that. I don't I think it just would have been the first female victim in uh, Charles McQuarrie. 31 year old Charles McCrary was found outside of an SUV with a gunshot wound to the head. Inside that SUV was a second female victim. They also found a, another female victim that was sitting in the passenger seat of a SUV that was parked in the driveway and she'd been shot four to five times through the passenger side window. Harrod says it appears McCrary and the deceased woman were in a relationship. Before she was taken to UMMC, the second victim told investigators an argument led to the shooting. You know, you see stuff with domestic violence happening all over the country now, and this is really the first, uh, you know, big incident we've had pertaining to that around here. So it's normally, yeah, it's normally pretty quiet. Chief Tommy Bibbs says the crime has other victims as well. There's children here, and that's, that's the really thing that, that we want to concentrate on with the kids. Chief Tommy Bibbs says the shooting is still under investigation. Both bodies have been taken to the crime lab. Investigators identify the man shot and killed in an argument with his son last night in Crawford. 62-year-old Willie Baptist died at his Starkville Road home. Lowndes County deputies say Baptist and his 41-year-old son got into an argument. Investigators believe Baptist fired a shot inside the home and then there was a struggle over the gun. That's when it fired again. Chief Deputy Greg Wright says the shooting remains under investigation and no arrests have been made. The case will be presented to the next grand jury. Coroner Greg Merchant says Baptist will be taken for an autopsy. Two arrests are made in connection with a string of threats against area schools. The threats were made through text messages. And while the incidents caused some disruptions at the schools, Quick response from law enforcement and school administrators helped nab the suspects and ensure campuses were safe. Our Allie Martin has more. At Pierce Street Elementary, parents were lining up to pick up their children at the usual time, while at nearby Tupelo Middle School, buses were running on schedule. But it was far from a normal day. Both schools were on partial lockdown Thursday and Friday after a social media threat targeted the campuses. Superintendent Dr. Rob Piku said the threats caused major disruptions. Significant uh, decrease in, in, in attendance today across the district. Uh, I don't have the exact numbers at my uh, fingertips, but they're very significant. So uh, obviously it causes disruption there, it causes a lot of panic and fear. We are, have taken every precaution and every step possible to ensure the safety of our students. Those precautions included increased police presence at all schools. Even after word came that two juveniles were arrested. Tupelo Police Chief Bartigari said the suspects are also being questioned about similar threats made to schools in Pontotoc and Oxford. Thanks to Pontotoc Police Department and Oxford, Police Department, uh, who actually broke this case for us. 
Police are also cautioning people not to reshare or repost any of the threats they may come across on social media. For one thing, there's no way to tell if the threat is legitimate. It could hinder the police investigation and it could land you in some trouble. There could possibly be additional charges that could possibly come from that as well. Anytime you cause uh, fear and cause a panic like that, uh, there's uh, possible charges that could come out of that. Officials also encourage parents to make sure their children know that all threats are taken seriously. It's important that everybody understands there's no such thing as a funny or a joke threat. Authorities say more arrests are likely as the investigation unfolds. In Tupelo, Ali Martin, WCBI News. Schools in Shannon and Okolona were also put on partial lockdowns after similar threats. In other news, a Mathiston man is killed in an early morning motorcycle accident in Octibaha County. Deputies were called to Brown Road just before 8 a.m. Investigators say the motorcycle 70-year-old Billy Jones was driving, ran off the road, and crashed. It's the only vehicle believed to be involved in the accident. A passerby saw the crash and called first responders. Octomaha County deputies are investigating the deadly crash. A Tupelo police pursuit ends in a crash, but the driver is still on the run tonight. Tupelo police tried to stop a black Dodge Charger in the Hilda Avenue area. Officers were conducting a safety checkpoint and say the car tried to go the other direction. The pursuit continued through Fair Park and East on Main Street. Police ended the chase near Skyline. Police officers then got reports the car crashed near the Lee Etiwamba County line, but the driver got away. Police are trying to identify the owner of the car. A Lowndes County man is accused of trying to choke his girlfriend and dropping a machete on her foot. 42-year-old Jeremy Vassar is charged with domestic violence, aggravated assault. Investigators say Vassar woke the victim up and was holding a dress and a machete. Deputies were told that Vassar accused her of cheating. The two argued and she was allegedly choked. At some point, the machete was dropped and landed on the woman's foot. She went to the hospital for treatment. Vassar's bond was set this afternoon at $20,000. Time now to turn things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. He joins us with a first look at our forecast. Joy, lots and lots of sunshine out there right now. Live view with our Alpha Insurance Camera Network. Look at this picture. Columbus, Tupelo, Vernon, and in Louisville. A lot of sunshine out there on our Friday. We've got temperatures around 90 in many spots here. Now, as we go further off into the evening, temperatures will be falling from the 90s into the 80s and then down into the upper 60s here. This is the next 24 hours in Tupelo, so some 60s for lows tonight. Mid to upper 90s around the region here as we start out the weekend on Saturday. We'll ballpark it somewhere around 97, Joey. Hot, but relatively dry out there. Your full forecast coming up. We're only two weeks into the school year and area educators are already reporting cases of the stomach virus and even the flu. Teachers and school nurses say younger students are especially vulnerable to the illnesses since they share supplies throughout the day. Educators say they're working on new ways to inform young minds about the differences in good germs and bad germs. We've seen several cases of strep throat. I did hear that we had a case of the flu already in August. Um, so those are the main things so far. Usually this is kind of early just for the flu mainly. Usually um, last year wasn't a bad flu season. The year before that was a really bad flu season. So um, yes, this early in August to have a flu case reported is, is pretty early. Woodruff says the school district supplies each classroom with hand sanitizer and Clorox wipes, but parents are encouraged to donate other cleaning supplies. Products that will end up in showrooms and stores across the country are on full display in Tupelo this week. We take a look when we come back. Welcome back. The area's largest entertainment venue is getting a little more comfortable. Workers recently finished installing new seat bottoms on the 6,000 plus seats in the upper bowl at the Van Corp South Arena. It's part of a three year project to replace floor risers and the upper section seating in the 26 year old arena. 
The arena's director says providing a top-notch experience for every guest is key to success. Our goal is for people when they come here to have a good time and enjoy themselves. And 25 years ago, the amenities that people expected weren't quite as high as they are now. Uh, certainly, uh, if you're going to be here for any extended length of time, you, you like to have a cushioned seat that you can sit in. And, and we, heard, we heard our patrons tell us that, and, and we've delivered. Well, looks like Allie's cozy. There are plans to link the conference center to the arena with the covered lobby and walkway. Thousands of people from across the country are in Tupelo for the biannual furniture market. Buyers are placing orders to fill their showrooms with shelves for the Christmas shopping season. And it's not just furniture, they're also casing out goods and accessories that will eventually end up in homes and business. Tupelo market's always been great for us. Um, and we've just noticed a growth um, for us personally here uh, year over year definitely by far. Uh, falls our most important time. We always uh, try to bring something new to the market so our customers want to come back because they, they really never know uh, from market to market uh, what we're going to have. Cracker Barrel is our largest customer. Yes, they have bought. This is their 50th anniversary and they started buying from us from day one. Well, that's interesting. Uh, the furniture market ends on Sunday. Blue Sky here at Sherman I-22. Traffic moved along just fine. Your evening here, your Friday evening looking great. Get out there and make the most of it. Your full weekend forecast is next. Stay with us. Your WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Here's a live view in Louisville, Mississippi at 617 on our Friday. A great Friday. Hopefully you've had a great day. And now as we get into the evening, that sun is getting lower on the horizon. That's a live view at Durham's Pharmacy in Vernon, Alabama. And as the sun gets lower, the temperature will cool on down to comfortable levels. It's been pretty hot today. And a live view there in Tupelo currently across northern Mississippi and in Columbus. Guess what? It's still sunny out there here on our Friday. 91 in Columbus, 92 in Tupelo, Memphis, 92 with a feel like temperature of 100. Overall, we've been in the 90s as far as the heat index today. It will be going up a little bit more so as we go through time. Your weekend Saturday, mostly sunny, hot. Look at that, 97, 95 Sunday. A 20% chance for a few spotty storms, which means most of you will not see any rain this weekend. And that bodes well for outdoor plans. Just have your sunscreen, your hats, your sunglasses ready to go here. Current temperatures low in mid-90s, 98 in Monroeville, Alabama, 99 currently in Montgomery. And these are the forecast highs for tomorrow. We're looking at 97 more or less. 100 in Birmingham, 101 in Montgomery. So pretty warm. The air is dry, and we've been mentioning this. Dry air will warm up much faster than humid air. So as we get more humidity in here later on in the weekend and next week, it won't be as hot, but it will be a little bit more oppressive. We push the showers and storms down to the Gulf Coast. Also some clouds back to the northwest. But right now we are sandwiched in between. We are home free here as we start the weekend. A few spotty storms Sunday, as I mentioned, a better chance for some of these scattered showers and storms as we get into next week. Just about every day here, Monday through Friday, we'll have a chance for some storms on a scattered basis, mainly during the heating of the day. So it's going to be random. Some of you may miss out, but we get back into that standard summertime weather pattern next week. Look at these lows here tonight, down into the mid to upper 60s, so another comfortable night here for our Friday night. And here's your planner for Saturday. By 10 o'clock already, 85, 93 at 1, 97, as I've mentioned, will be our forecast high in many spots here as we start the weekend. Your future heat index forecast around 100 or the low 100s tomorrow, but between 100 and 105 as we get into your Sunday. And that's the general ballpark for early next week, too, is that moisture, the humidity comes on back. So dry tomorrow. A few spotty storms possible Sunday, 95. Low to mid-90s for all of next week with about a 20 to 30% chance for rain each and every day. The high school football tour continues to wind down. Stop number 54 checks in with the Lafayette Commodores. See the preview next in sports. Your WCBI Sports with Courtney Robb is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further.
The high school football tour checks in with the Lafayette Commodores. In 2018, the Doors felt like they had what it takes to go all the way. And now after falling short, they enter this new season hungry for more. Lafayette is stop number 54 on our 60 in 60 marathon. WCBI 60 Schools in 60 Days is brought to you by Sparklight. The more motivation, the better. At least, that's how the Lafayette Commodores are approaching the 2019 season. After falling to West Point in the second round of the playoffs and finishing the 2018 season 9-4, and four, the Doors graduated 25 seniors, leaving plenty of motivation on their plate. While some might see it as an obstacle, head coach Michael Fair welcomes the challenge, saying that the program he's been building over the past few years makes the turnover easy to handle. We had a lot of good players behind those guys. They were just waiting on opportunities and, and they're about to get one I mean Friday night so uh, I think our seniority kind of lies on the offensive and defensive line but we also have Randy Anderson coming back who started started for us the last two years at quarterback so uh, it's always nice to have him back and I think we've got enough pieces around him to tell, hopefully take the load off a little bit. One of the big pieces returning for Lafayette is going to be at the line. The doors return all five offensive linemen from last year and three or four defensive linemen as well. That component, Fair says, should be a major key in finding success. That experience is something that you just really can't get anywhere else, you know. And so they've been through some tough battles. And, you know, we played West Point tied a couple times last year, and we felt like we were knocking on the door. And we play in such a tough district that, uh, you know, we feel like the line of scrimmage is so important. That final game of the season against West Point has stuck with Lafayette through the offseason. The doors fell short of a third-round berth by just one TD. Now it drives the team to make necessary improvements. West Point put us out, so um, we just messed up on messed up about two plays right there. So this year, I think we've really worked on executing them better. Just looking at the little things better. We're um, we're going through each play with uh, more. Uh, we're going through each play more serious, making sure we're going taking our right steps. Working on our tackling, working on our gaps, and all the other stuff. Lafayette will get another shot at West Point come mid September, but the doors know to get there. They first have to get past week one. We work our opponent each day. We uh, we want to want to beat our opponent each day. We don't know what they're doing, so we got to focus on ourselves. So we got to win the day every every day here at Lafayette. Yeah, it's been a long off season. I think for all of us, you know, I, I think we uh, had a good season last year and 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 played pretty close to some really good, good opponents and uh, kind of felt like we had a chance, you know, to move on in the playoffs and didn't end well. So uh, what do you do every day from, from that last game to this coming Friday night? And that's all that matters. You know, we don't talk about playoffs or championships or anything like that. We really just talk about today and are we taking advantage of every single day? And I'm going to be honest with you, this team has probably done that as well as any team I've coached. But we never talk about week two. You know, we just talk about week one. So we put a lot of importance on it. And, uh, you know, uh, we hope we're one and, one and oh, and, and you can't win them all if you don't win the first one. I've heard that before. Lafayette gets its season started on the road against Cleveland Central on August 23rd. With the Commodores on the high school football tour, Courtney Robb, WCBI Sports. And we have plenty of jamborees from around the area that we'll have for you later tonight for Sports at 10. That's it for sports. We'll have the last look at your weather when we come back after the break. Stay with us. Oh, hey. <laughs> we, were, we were just talking about Shrek, weren't we, Joey? We were. You've never seen it. I haven't It's a great it. weekend to watch. You it's going to be hot tomorrow. It's hot tomorrow. Good time to go to the movie theater Saturday and Sunday. Stay cool if you can. More storms next week. Now, I think I've only seen one of those uh, animated Pixar-type movies really? in my life. Uh, I have seen Shrek multiple times, so I, I highly could, recommend it. Okay, well, if I'm in the mood, I'll watch it. There you go. <laughs> that will probably never happen. <laughs> there, there you go. go. All right. <laughs> have, a good, have a good night, everybody. <laughs>